Hi, happy Sunday, happy Father's Day, and welcome to A Place of Faith. We are so glad to have you with us. A Place of Faith invites and encourages all who are seeking a community to empower, support, and explore a deeper understanding of spirituality and recovery of every kind. We join together with our family and loved ones in our journey into enlightenment and recovery and supporting one another spiritually without judgment or prejudice. Please join me in our opening prayer. Higher power, Father, Mother, God, all that is or ever has been, however we call out spiritually, we know that you are there. We know that we are connected in light and in love, whether we turn our attention to the ocean waves or the mountains around us, we find you there and we find you here and we are so grateful. Thank you, God. Amen. so blessed by your music. So today for Father's Day, our spiritual principle is discipline. That kind of sounds like a, an interesting principle for Father's Day, but so often we expect our, our fathers, our father figures to be the one who does the discipline, the one that holds us uh, accountable. We grow up with whatever father figure is trying to hold us uh, accountable, and usually we don't like them very much. Uh, we don't want to hear that we were naughty, or we can't have, or we can't do, or, or we have to 
pay for whatever it was. And then we have our own kids, and they're so cute. How can we tell them no? How can we tell them that they aren't supposed to? But we know that if we don't tell them no, our kids are the ones that are throwing the big fit in the store, screaming and yelling because they can't have whatever it is that they want. The ones that all the parents are looking at, we're saying, my kid would never do that. And the reality is they will, too, if you don't discipline them, if you don't teach them right and wrong. So it's, it's coming up with that line. What's good discipline? What's bad discipline? I grew up getting spanked and all kinds of things. And now we aren't supposed to lay hands on our children at all. Well, how do I discipline you if I can't paddle your butt? It's, it's hard to find the ways. And then who do you become if you aren't disciplined? And for those of us in recovery, we, uh, we kind of know the answer to that. It's the rules. It's the accountability. It's the consequences that help shape us into the people that we want to be. And as mad as we get at our authority figures, whoever they might be, as we grow, as we move forward, as we accomplish things we had no idea that we were capable of, no idea that we could create, it's those authority figures that we're grateful for, that we give thanks to, that helped us to feel safe enough to grow and safe enough to try. As much as we dislike those rules, it's those rules that keep us safe. As long as I know that there are boundaries, I can explore everything, everything inside this space that I've been given. So on Father's Day today, let us join together and take a few moments to be profoundly grateful for those who cared enough for us in our lives to offer us discipline, to be the ones to give us consequences and hold us accountable. Thank you so much, each and every one, in my life and in your life, too. This is the principle in practice. And right now, it's my great honor to introduce to you Barbara, who is going to share our, our contemplation concepts. Concepts for contemplation. Here she is. Concepts of contemplation. Fathers and father figures are the strength behind the upbringing of a child. Daughters adore their fathers and search for the same loving personality in the man they fall in love with. Sons in, are inspired by their fathers for the strength and support they receive in abundance from the fathers and father figures in their lives. They would always aspire to become someone as wonderful and humane as their fathers are. Even for the grown-up fathers, even for the grown-ups, fathers will remain to be looked to for wisdom and advice. Even when our father figures are unconventional, coaches, teachers, and even moms. Today, let us honor all people who hold us accountable, all of the people who call us out and expect the best in us. Thank you to all of the people who love us enough to help us face our consequences and know we are evolving. On a crystal clear blue morning there is a peace that only you can know it is truth and love and it is always there 
even if you fall down, even if you fall down, love shines. Oh, it shines like an internal sun. It shines. Oh, love shines like an internal sun. It shines. Think of gentle Jesus. And think of the Buddha underneath his tree. They taught the world about love and how we all can be. How we can all be free. Open our hearts and see love shines. Oh, it shines like an internal sun. It shines. Oh, love shines. Like an internal sun, it shines. Oh, love shines. Like an internal sun, love shines. On a crystal clear blue morning, there is a peace that only you can know. It is truth and love, and it is always there. Even if you fall down, even if you fall down, love shines. Oh, it shines like an internal sun. It shines. Oh, love shines like an internal sun. It shines. Oh, love shines. Like an eternal sun, love shines. Yeah. It shines, 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 love it. I shine, 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 love it shines. Oh, it shines like an eternal sun, love shines. Thank you, Jody. That was absolutely beautiful. And now we come to a time of meditation, a time of contemplation. So often it used to be very popular to go to your happy place, right? Oh, yeah, just go to your happy place. Sit and go to your happy place. Well, I'm going to invite you to do that today. Actually, I'm going to invite you to take kind of an action today as well. I am about to share with you um, my happy place. Many of you know that my mom just passed away. As you settle in and get comfortable, I will share with you a video that I took at sunrise on her property. Um, a couple of months ago. And I did this so that I could embrace that amazing music of the land that she had. So sit back and enjoy. The video isn't, isn't much. It's just trees. But the sounds of the birds are phenomenal. She was living in a home that sat on an orange grove. And the, the morning songs, you're going to hear roosters. You're going to hear a peacock. You're going to hear an owl. This is absolutely a beautiful piece. And it's something that with today's technology, we can all do. Just grab your cell phone and take it to that happy place and get quiet and listen. And perhaps you'll hear something like this.
And as we come back, let us come back knowing there are so many ways that we can be in touch with the things that have sustained us, the things that have given us value and meaning. Let us open our eyes being renewed and aware that who we are has a lot to do with who we've been and everything to do with who we're about to become. Please join me in prayer. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for an opportunity to remember, to assess, and to honor the people all around us who support us, who love us, who tolerate us, who challenge us to be better than we've ever been before. Thank you, God, that we can find you, see you, and know you in the face and the words and the deeds of everyone we contemplate. And so it is. So today for Father's Day, we are going to talk about discipline. And that's something a lot of us really, really don't like, especially as children. We've talked about that already. I kind of want to talk about the definition of undiscipline. According to Webster's online dictionary, the definition of undisciplined is lacking in discipline or self-control. So what about undisciplined people? What are some of the commonalities of the people around us, maybe even us, when we're undisciplined? They lack self-control, obviously, and they will not respect their parents or other authority figures. They will not know what is appropriate behavior. Have you been in that bind, not even knowing? Is this appropriate? Is this not appropriate? I can remember a time in my life when I was trying to become disciplined when I would watch other people and try and figure out what do normal people do, right? How did they handle it? What's appropriate for them? And then just act like them until I figured it out, until I found my own appropriate behavior. These people will be willful, selfish, and generally unpleasant company. Have you ever experienced that? We're supposed to love everybody, but that Uncle George or, or Aunt Harrietta, just not real good to be around. They will not have the social skills that, that are important for making friends, such as empathy, patience, and knowing how to care for one another. They're more likely to be negative. And I just turned that off. OK, here we go. Lack of discipline. So often, that's the very issue that brings us to our knees, that creates the vulnerability in us, that gets us to search for recovery, to search for spirituality, to search for a better way, a different way, to become teachable, that maybe we don't know all that. Maybe we need something more. So how do we get discipline? We certainly don't want to go back to being children, right? I'm a full-grown adult. And I might realize that I don't have the discipline. I can't even attain my goals. I can't even stay in my, my daily schedule, my daily routine. I just don't have the discipline. Well, I can tell you how I got there. Uh, for those of you who know my story or know what the story is, I, I had a lot of relapses. When I was trying to get on my feet and get my disease and recovery and create a new life. And it seems like every single time you have a relapse, a slip, a lapse, whatever you call it, somebody tells you, you have to do 90 and 90, meaning you have to go to 90 meetings in 90 days, which is 
really a lot, lot, lot to do. And of course, I fought it, I lied about it, I hid it. Oh yeah, I went to a meeting. Oh, I went to four meetings today, it was brutal. And of course, I was lying, and then I'd slip, and I'd relapse, and I'd slip, and I relapse. And when I started to realize that maybe I should quit looking for shortcuts, maybe I should quit trying to manipulate the system and find a softer, gentler way, maybe I ought to just buck up and follow through and do what was asked of me. I did 90 meetings in 90 days. And at the end of that 90, 90 meetings, I finally started to see some value in them. And I kept going. And I kept doing more. D about this time, when I started in solid recovery, I went back to school. I went to college. And realized that my disease had gifted me with a math deficiency. It really upset me because I had been very mathematical. Math and science had seemed like my path, where I was going, and what I was planning on doing with my life. And it was gone. And I could remember it being there, but it just wasn't there. I could remember when the whole universe spoke to me in equations where it was a language, a life, kind of a way of, of handling everything. If I could get the map, I could figure everything out. And it was gone. It just left. A lot of us have lost things in unhealthy lifestyles and unhealthy choices in diseases, whether they were of our own creation, whether they were genetic, whether they were imposed upon us by the environment so often, we find ourselves looking at life in a whole different way, having to do different things. <clears throat> so when I got to college, it became important for me to be able to pass college map. Kind of impossible. Didn't have any math skills at all. <clears throat> I got a teacher who stood up in front of the class on the first day and lifted up a, a little panel with the number, and she said, this is a whole number. And I thought, thank God, this is exactly the class I need to be in. But at some point in time, I had to take a real college class. <clears throat> and the school that I was going to had a math department, a math laboratory. And there was a class that you could take that you did at your own pace. And my school counselor said, no, don't do that. Nobody ever, ever passes that. I'm like, really? They had tutors. They had computer games. They had practice tests. They had everything that I felt like I needed to be able to actually get through the, the class. At the time, I was kind of a shy student, and I might ask a question in class one time, but if I didn't understand it, I'd never mention it again. And the math lab seemed like the perfect answer. My counselor told me, no. He told me that it takes so many hours that you're obligated to be in that math club like five days a week if you were taking the class that I was on. <clears throat> and I told him, piece of cake, I can totally do that. And I did do that. And I did pass the class with a B. Um, but I worked my butt off for that B. And I was glad to get it because of self-discipline because I had done the 90 meetings in 90 days. There are so many ways that we need to be disciplined if we want to go forward in life. Sometimes it's what we're eating and the way we're eating. Sometimes it's what we're spending. And the way we're spending, many of us need to learn how to budget. Sometimes it's playing video games, talking on the phone, studying for classes, driving a car in traffic, 
we need to have the discipline to do the right thing. And the same way we were talking about in principles, that the kids feel safe if they know they've got boundaries, if they know that they've got consequences. We as adults feel safe when we know that we can count on ourselves. We know that we can trust ourselves to do the right thing, to make the right decision, to show up. To sit through that board meeting that is so incredibly boring, we can do that. We've got the discipline, and we know that it's for our greater good. Self-discipline as a spiritual principle develops our spirituality. If we take the time on a daily basis to do our prayer work, to do our meditation, to do our studying, we're the ones that reap the reward. This is one of those areas that if we put the work in, we get the reward. We're not doing it for somebody else. We're doing it for ourselves. And if we look at it that way, self-discipline actually becomes a form of self-care, right? I know that I can trust myself to go to the store and buy the right food so I can eat the right things, so I can have the right energy and to do the walks and to pay the bills. And the more I know that, the more I believe that, the more confidence I have, the more I can look people right in the eye, the more I can show up and say, yeah, I have worth, I have value because I have self-discipline. The, the things that we need to practice Maybe it's martial arts. Maybe it's surfing. Maybe we're going to learn ice skating and become an ice skater. Picking up the skills, learning the mechanics isn't going to give us the results that we want. It's self-discipline. It's moving forward. It's working at it even when it's hard, even when we don't want to because we want the results, and we reap the rewards. We're the ones that benefit. We're the ones that excel. We're the ones that become all that we can be, and more than we ever dreamed. Please join me in prayer. Thank you, God, for showing us that we do want discipline, that we do want boundaries, that we want to know that we can believe in ourselves. We are worthy, and we have something to offer. God, as we learn to know you and see you and hear you, we also learn how to express you. And what a joy that is for each and every one of us. Thank you, God. Amen. Only believe, only believe, only believe all things are possible if you only believe, only believe. In bringing our time together to a close, there are a couple of announcements we'd like to share with you. And one of the things that we are such an advocate for in recovery is service work. And there's a couple of opportunities here in El Cajon that need your attention. The Salvation Army needs food donations, and they're right here in El Cajon. 
The San Diego Blood Bank needs blood, and their site is, there is a site here in El Cajon that you can donate to. You can reach them through their online uh, websites and get more information. We also, once places are reopened, we can bring this service to your organization. We would be glad to do so. You can contact us through our email at aplaceoffaith at zohumail.com. You can also connect with us on Facebook or, again, through our email. We want to thank you for your donations. They help support this ministry. And you can send your checks to Unity Church of El Cajon. You can go on to Unity Church of El Cajon's website, and there's a donate button. It is easy. It's safe. Just highlight that you want the money directed to a place of faith. Or you can call in with your credit card, and we will be able to help you over the phone. And stand by for news about our reopening our public service. And there will be a new time at 12 noon. We will keep you informed. And in closing, please join me as I say the prayer for St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is dying that we are born to eternal life. Go in peace today, and we'll see you next week. Amen.